All right, welcome back to another one of our film reviews. Today, we are breaking down Chargers rookie Tuli Tui Pelotu, who we will refer to as Tuli for the rest of this presentation, just to make sure we don't embarrass ourselves trying to pronounce his last name regularly. This is an exciting rookie for the Los Angeles Chargers, and we've got a great setup of cutups for you with his performance against the Bears, highlighting a lot of different things he brings to this defense. I think he could be kind of a hidden weapon to push this Chargers defense back into winning games, getting themselves back into playoff contention. As always, if you appreciate this content, give us a like, give us a comment with any feedback you might have. But without further ado, let's jump right into the film. All right, we're going to open up with a run defense here, sort of a short yarded situation. And the Bears are basically doing double teams inside to that linebacker, double teams in this side to 31. Left tackles kicking out the defensive end. The tight end is kicking out Tuli right there. And this is, again, a short yardage situation. In this situation, and in Tuli's position right here, you're just trying to secure the edge and maybe flatten the hole a little bit of this by driving the tight end inside. You really aren't expected to do a whole lot. It's these interior guys that are supposed to stop the inside run. But Tuli goes above and beyond and actually saves a touchdown on this play. Let's check out what happens. All right, you can see the double teams inside, right? You can see the movement at the point of attack. You can see bodies on bodies. You can see the end zone right there at the bottom of your, bottom of your screen. You keep rolling. Folks, this is a touchdown for the offense. They've got bodies on bodies. They've got movement. This is a running back who's just basically going to walk in pretty much standing up for a big score. But if we go back to the beginning here, watch Thule fight through Cole Komet, veteran tight end, play a lot of football, and make the tackle. Folks, that's elite level stuff. That's a touchdown saving play. Again, not a big difference in this game. Chargers won in a blowout. But I tell you what, in the close games, the Chargers are going to have to win later in the season to get themselves back in the playoff hunt. It's plays like these that are huge, right? Because this is a touchdown for the offense, the way they executed it up front. But Thule right here beats his man one-on-one, -on -one, makes the play. Great run stuff. This is how you can win football games. This is how you can win close games. It's these extra plays right here. We've got a couple of them to go through um, for, for you guys here today of the extra kind of plays Thule provides that can be the difference for this Chargers defense down the stretch. This kid can get after the quarterback. He can be productive. This was not one of his most productive games. But in terms of what he brings to the table outside of production, this is, I think, the element the Chargers defense has been missing, and this play is a great example of it. Yeah, Nick, and this is Thule's bread and butter. He has been phenomenal in run defense this season. Season-long 82 grade in the run defense department. Just making plays like this. Like you said, going up against savvy veteran tight ends, making big time plays, saving the touchdown right here. What more could you ask for from a young rookie? This guy is absolutely phenomenal and looking very, very good for this Chargers defense. All right, switching up to a pass rush situation, there is Thule right here. He is going to be one-on-one -on, -one on the left tackle for the Bears right there. And these are the plays we've come to see a lot of Thule. I love showing off this play. It's just one-on-one -on -one pass pro. Let's watch how Thule just takes number 75 and just humiliates him. This is a great example of Thule's athleticism and what he brings to this Chargers defense from the pass rush perspective. Get off, quick swim inside, totally beat. Now, look, it's a quick game from the Bears offense, so Thule's not going to get there, unfortunately. Otherwise, it probably would have been a sack, maybe even a sack fumble. But, oh, my goodness, I don't think this Bears tackle even touches him. I don't think 75 gets a hand on him. Watch this move. Right? Just completely beats him inside like it's nothing. Like, you can see the Bears left tackle. Like, he shoots his hands and totally misses his hands, then tries to redirect. Thule does a nice swim move, little arm over technique. You kind of see it there just to finish off the rep and get inside. And one thing I really like about this, some kind of, sometimes defensive guys in this situation, they do inside moves. They just flash and crash really hard inside and give the quarterback an outlet to escape, and they kind of lose contain. I love how Tui stays vertical, right? See how he still – he doesn't just flash inside and try and go directly at the quarterback. He keeps himself in a good position that way if Badgent, the quarterback there, bailed to him, he would be in position to maintain his outside contain. That's always the danger when you do the inside move because if you flash too much inside from an edge defender perspective and this quarterback escapes, this could be a huge run or a big play, a big throw down the field. Not a lot of things your defense can do to counteract that. But Thule does a great job not just beating the left tackle but keeps working vertical to maintain his edge responsibility as well. You can see where he's attacking him right here. He's not flashing inside. He's getting up the field. This is phenomenal stuff. Again, it's a Bears quick game, so he doesn't have a chance to get a quarterback hit or pressure on the quarterback. But just the way he beats his left tackle cleanly and maintains his pass rush discipline is an outstanding rep from this impressive young rookie. Yeah, Nick, I think this is a just a show of what could be. Obviously, Badgent stepping in for the Bears at quarterback all night is going to be quick releases, getting rid of the ball, 
as fast as possible. They knew this Chargers defense was coming. So I think if this was a you know full-fledged NFL offense not hobbling on one leg, Tooley's going to make a lot more plays. And I think this is showing he already has 14 hurries on the season, looking very productive in the pass rush game. Even though that's not his best attribute, he's already very, very productive as a pass rusher with the Chargers. So I think this was a really nice play by him. All right, let's go back to a run defense. There is Thule right there. He is the edge defender. The Bears have two tight ends. There's one of them right there. There's a second one right there to his side. So they're really heavy on that side. And you can see with all this space right here, this is where the Bears want to go right there and run the football because there's a lot of green grass right there. And just there's one player. There's the safety, of course. you got number six potentially playing inside as well that could be involved in this play. But you can see all this green grass and this whole structure of this design. This was a game plan from the Chicago Bears because they figured that the Chargers would line up to counteract this formation and they could then run at this bubble right here. All this green grass just run downhill here for a very productive play. But this play gets blown up and defeated by Thule specifically. Because, again, look at all this green grass. This is all meant to be area they can run the football. Thule right here is playing the edge, but he also compresses the hole down so much that he eliminates a lot of this green grass, ends up being a stuff for the Chargers defense. Let's check out how it goes. So right there, you can see the Bears are attacking this. They've got a double team inside to number six. You've got the tight end. That's Robert Tunyon working up to the safety, Derwin James. You can see Cole Komet once again, one-on-one -on -one right there with Thule. Let's go back to the very beginning. One thing about Thule right there at the beginning, I love this right here. He stamps the tight end's chest. He keeps his feet right there. Quick pause right there. He keeps it parallel to the line of scrimmage to maintain the edge, right? You can see if this running back, if he just so happened to bounce outside, Thule would maintain his outside edge responsibility, his outside contain responsibility. So phenomenal technique from the rookie right there, going back to the very beginning. But watch him just bully Cole Komet inside and just eliminate all of this green grass. Watch what happens. He just drives a tight end. Go back to the very beginning. Where did this tight end start right here, Cole Komet? He started on the hash. So right here, these two, three yards right here, this is all the green grass the Bears want to attack. Look where Cole Komet ends up for the Bears. All the way in the far edge of that two to three yards. The hole is completely compressed. This running back, this whole design is to get running back one-on-one -on -one in space with either Derwin James or a linebacker with a lot of green grass to operate. Thule compresses this hole so much. Running back really has nowhere to go, just has to duck it up inside and gets like a yard or two. Again, this won't appear on the stat sheet. Doesn't show up as a tackle for Thule. Doesn't show up as anything. But this play is made 100% by him. And he does it while also maintaining his edge responsibility. I mean, great technique, securing the edge, getting, make sure his feet, if we back up a little bit, like I said, keeping his feet right there, parallel to the line of scrimmage, make sure the running back bounces, he's there to contain him, but also driving the tight end and compressing the hole, forcing the running back to duck up inside. This is phenomenal work from the rookie right here. Again, not on the stat sheet, but elite play here from this impressive playmaker. Yeah, Nick, and these are the only the kind of things you can see if you look, watch the game closely, or break down the film afterwards. Like you said, these type of things don't show up on the stat sheet, but this guy makes tons of plays like this where he is able to affect the play but not directly affecting the play, and those are what special players do. And I think this guy is very capable of doing things like this for many years to come. All right, let's go back to a pass rush situation. There is Thule right here. You can see the Chargers come with a unique approach defensively because there is Bosa right there. He's on the same side as Khalil Mack right there. That is obviously a mismatch for any opposing offense, of course. But the Bears come up with a pretty standard structure of how you would protect this with two quality edge rushers. So they have the tight end. There's Cole Komet right there. His whole responsibility would be to chip and then work out into some kind of check down. They have the running back right here, number 35. His responsibility would be to chip and work out for the check down right here. But what a guy like Thule can bring to the table because he's a good enough edge rusher is he forces teams to bring in a guy like Komet to chip. And what that does, it allows them to play Bosa and Mac on the same side because teams can't just sit there and say, okay, where's Bosa, where's Mac? Let's shift over and get everybody over there. They have to respect Thule's pass rushing capabilities, and that's exactly what happens here. And because teams respect his ability, the Chargers are able to sneakily come up with alignments like this, schemes like this, that get Bosa right there one-on-one -on -one against number 65 for the Bears. That's a mismatch. Let's watch how this play unfolds. Again, so you can see the tight end chip on Thule right there, which doesn't make sense. You should be helping your poor guy blocking Bosa on this side. But again, the Bears come into this structure thinking we need to protect both edges because that's where they normally expect the edge rushers to come from. Because you have a guy like Thule, you can slide Bosa in as more of an interior pass rusher. 
And oh my goodness, is he embarrassed? Number 65 gets the sack. I tell you what, Chargers fans, you can win a lot of games if you can get offenses to do this. I mean, because there's no guard in football that can block Bosa. There just there just isn't. He's too good of a player, especially in a pass rush situation, big time sack. Because coming out, teams will have to strategically align tight ends and running backs to provide chip support on edge defenders. And if they think this could potentially be Khalil Mack over there and Bosa over here, for example, they won't expect when one of them one of them lines up inside, and the result will be mismatches and sacks just like these. All right, switching up to a run defense, there is Thule right there. He is on your left. The defense is right. And the Bears are just running a wide kind of zone scheme here, working everybody on the offense, working to the right, trying to get bodies flying this way. And most teams, what they do with young defensive players in this situation, they just say, hey, fly and pursue as best you can down the line of scrimmage. Don't worry about anything else. But either he, and by he, I mean Thule in this case, is savvy enough to understand that this is a Bears team, even with Badgent in there at quarterback. They like to do bootlegs. They like to get the quarterback on the perimeter. Even he is, either he's savvy enough on his own to recognize that, and he kind of slows his place pace down here before he pursues, or he's coached this and the Chargers defense puts that pressure on the rookie. Either way, it's a sign that this is a kid who is able to do more than one thing, which is impressive from a young defender at this point in his career. Let's watch what happens here. All right, you can see the motion. There you can see the toss and the outside run. Everybody's working that. You can see Thule pursuing right there. But watch what Thule does right here. See how he patterns his feet, slows down real quick? It's very, very subtle. But you can see him stop. He kind of slows down. Look at his eyes, right? Very, very slow here. Look at his eyes. He immediately is took and looking at the quarterback right there, making sure it's on a bootleg. And then he pursues and makes a tackle. I don't see many edge defenders, let alone rookies, have this discipline to check the quarterback's eyes or check the quarterback to see if he has the football or not before accelerating accelerating down the line of scrimmage and making the tackle. This is special stuff. See how it checks the quarterback briefly, comes involved, makes the play. Again, most edge defenders, namely Will Anderson Jr., great-looking rookie for the Houston Texans. All the film I've seen of them, D'Amico Ryan's their coach, just says, hey, man, see ball, get ball. Don't worry about anything else. The Chargers either believe this kid just on his own is savvy enough to recognize that, or I think he's actually coached this. It's in there, hey, check the quarterback first, which he does, and then fly down and make the tackle. That's next-level stuff. That's veteran stuff. That's responsibilities you put on a Khalil Mack or a Bosa. That's not something you throw on a rookie unless you think he's smart enough and athletic enough to handle it. And Thule certainly is both. This kid, what he brings to the defense, again, it's the little things. It's the ability to potentially check for a bootleg and pursue that if need be while also going down the line of scrimmage and making the tackle in this situation. It's everything he brings to the table. It's just an extra element to this Chargers defense. And I think the more he plays, the more productive he will be, and this team will get better and better because of it. A lot of questions about this Chargers defense so far through the season, but I tell you what, this rookie isn't one of them. He's going to be a special player. Yeah, Nick, and like you said, this guy could be getting coached up, and I think he just has a knack for football, a love for the game, and he has a family history of being absolutely great at the game of football. His brother Marlon plays for the Eagles. His cousin Hufanga, safety for the 49ers. This is a family of guys who live in, eat, sleep, breathe football all day long. So I think that this guy, like you said, he is one savvy enough to do all kinds of things. He can check for bootlegs. He can do all kinds of reads pre-snap before he goes and pursues the ball. He doesn't have to be as simplified as see ball, get ball. This guy is a very nuanced player. All right, going from the sideline view, there is Thule right there as the edge defender. And this is sort of a play of, of one of those examples of Thule doing things above and beyond. And all this is going to be right here from the Bears is just a quick throw out here to DJ Moore, I believe, who's going to get a couple yards, great tackle by the corner. But one of the problems, and Chargers fans can certainly relate over the past couple of years, is they've lost games they should have won because random opportunities to make big plays, they either give them up themselves or they don't make it. A ball's on the ground and no one's there to pick it up. Or one guy misses a tackle and they didn't hustle and ends up being a 50, 60-yard play. The Tony Pollard example against Dallas early in the season is a great example of that. But I want everyone to watch Tolu and watch the effort he has here and compare him with the safety. This is a safety whose responsibility is to work back here in coverage. This is just totally 100% effort. Watch what he does here. This is a great example of effort. Again, doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but it's one of these plays that gives you the opportunity to win if opportunity presents itself. All right, so you can see the quick hitch outside. Corner comes up, makes a nice tackle. But watch Thule right there at the end, hustling down. 
This is, first of all, it's a great athletic play because if you watch right here in freeze, you've got the safety who right here has a better angle to be involved with the play. He's also closer to play. He's about a yard and a half away from the hash. Tuli's about two and a half yards away from the hash. But you can see Tuli pursuing right at the same time, just a step behind him, gets involved with the tackle. This is an example of what I'm talking about, Chargers fans. Let's say right here, ball comes out. Right here. In times past, I've seen Chargers games where you guys got loafing around, right? And the ball goes, goes out of bounds. They don't get a chance to cover the fumble for a potential game-changing play. But in this case, Thule's right there. If this ball comes out, he's picking that up. He's scooping and scoring. Or how about if they miss these tackles like we saw against Tony Pollard earlier with Dallas, where he's able to slip out of a tackle and turn a 20-yard gain into a 60-yard game, and it being a game-changing play for the Cowboys against the Chargers. But in this case, you got Thule. He's right there. So let's say these guys miss the tackle against a good player. Thule finishes them off himself. Again, it's not going to show up on the stat sheet, but it's one of these little things. It's the effort plays. When opportunities happen later in the season for game-changing plays, Thule's going to be there to take advantage of them, and the Chargers are going to win games because of it. I'm telling you, Charger fans, it will happen. This kid plays a relentless motor, relentless effort. These are things you don't see from a lot of people in the NFL, unfortunately. You just don't get it. Guys lollygag, guys loaf around. You can see a lot of these guys on the field. You can see the safety, right? He's slowing up his space a little bit. Shouldn't happen. You should be flying to the football. But Tuli is, and that's one of those things. When balls come out, he's going to be there to pick it up to create turnovers, or if bad things happen, he can't tackle, he'll be there to finish off plays. It's the little things that matter, and Tuli is all about the little things. All right, we're going to end on a one-on-one -on -one pass rush. There is Tuli right there. He's matched up against Bears rookie right tackle Darnell Wright. We've done a few film reviews on him. He's a pretty good pass protector. This is just going to be a one-on-one -on -one pass rush situation right here between the two rookies, rookie on rookie action. And this may be my favorite play from Tuli all game long. Again, he causes an incomplete pass. It doesn't show up on the stat sheet. But again, it's just another element of his game. We've seen his speed. We've seen his athleticism. We've seen his intelligence. We've seen his physical nature in the run game. Now let's look at his physical nature in the pass rush game let's check it out all right comes off the ball attacks him right in the chest drives him into the quarterback forces the incomplete pass right you can see the quarterback can't step into his throw it's Aaron. It's incomplete in the red zone right incomplete pass is a huge play incomplete pass is a is a huge play wherever you are and again this is against darnell Wright, a really good pass protector a big dude a lot of size he gives up on two or truly gives up a lot of size to darnell Wright in this situation but i love it gets up the field and then attacks into his chest and drives him into the quarterback Nicely done. Again, it's not going to show up on the stat sheet. I don't even think that counts as a pressure. But this incomplete pass is caused because you drove that right tackle right into the quarterback's arm. I mean, watch the quarterback's footwork there. He can't even step into the throw. I mean, you can see the quarterback right here. Watch the quarterback's left hand. The quarterback's left hand is bracing the tackle. You think this is going to be an accurate throw if you're the quarterback and your non-throwing hand is extended, pushing back the offensive tackle that's being driven into your face? No chance to complete the ball there. And it's all because of Tuli's pass rush. This physical nature in the pass rush game, didn't see a whole lot of it. Hope we see a little bit more of it. But again, it's just another example of all the things he can provide. It's his intelligence, his motor, his athleticism, his quickness. And now we're seeing his power in the pass rush game as well. Obviously, with Bosa and Mack, there's only a limited amount of reps that he can provide because those two guys are superstars. But I tell you what, folks, when one of those guys isn't on the field, Tulu makes plays happen. He does the little things for you as well. And Chargers fans, you should be excited that you picked up this rookie because I think he has a chance to be something special.